Uh, but, hey, on the line right now, our good pal from Posting and Posting, Dot com, Seth Rosenthal, Seth Apotamus, how are you doing? I am exquisite, how are you guys? We're doing all right, Seth. Uh, so, the, the, the rumor about LeBron James, it's, uh, it's not LeBron James, but the Latte West and, and LeBron's mom. What do you make of all this? Do you, do you think it's true? Uh, and and is, I, I, I say it's, it's actually, you know, Seems like a pretty good reason for LeBron to start playing poorly. Yeah, I mean, if, if that let's say that was the case, which is totally true, then yeah, I, I really can't blame him for playing poorly. But I don't know, I don't, I don't really buy any of that. Um, and moreover, I don't really think it's any even if that was the case, that it's something of that nature that's the case. It's not really our business. Um, but yeah, I mean, until until it's more out about it, it, it sounds like it's, it's eh, all right. Well, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but you know, it's it's uh, it's something crazy, and you know, I, I do trust the guy who posted it, Therese Owens, on uh, TherezeOwens.com. He, I, he's, a, he's a pretty credible source, but we'll leave it at that for now. Um, but we're here to talk uh, some basketball, and um, LeBron was terrible in the last three games, whether it's you know, game four, he had seven turnovers, wasn't effective, they lost that one. Lose game five when he was three for 14, and then last night, the nine turnovers to go with the triple-double. What do you make of LeBron's last three games? What do you think uh, is, is the reason for it? That's, you know, I, I sit back for days and never come up with a reason for it, but even though know, he looked like he was playing late, I don't know, you know, why. You know, it was mom, but I just... He, he was playing like he ultimately didn't trust himself and then didn't trust his teammates. Like he just was out there completely alone and he was disinterested. He was bored. He was, you know, heartless. It just I, everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. Um, and yeah, like you said, the nine turnovers last night. He was just sloppy. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I agree with everything that everyone's been saying about, you know, Mike Brown's system not really figuring out his talents and the Celtics should have had his number. And the Celtics played really well and as, as, as a unit played really poorly. But why that would suddenly come to the forefront, you know, in the 90th, 100th game of the season is, is beyond me. I don't really know what got into him. Uh, it could just be that the Celtics figured him out, but it seemed like it was more than that. Well, you make a good point there, Seth. I mean, people saying that the, the, the system doesn't cater to uh, LeBron James. Uh, I, I don't know how he won multiple MVP awards playing for that system. But, uh, you know, some people are also saying how he might have stopped playing, especially in Game 5, because he wanted to send a message to his teammates and basically, you know, rely on them for once to put on a performance to show, right, if we're going to be good enough for the championship, you're going to have to step up and play good. I think that's total BS. I mean, why, so, why a guy would waste a game in the playoffs and the, really just waste a year in his career to not try to win a championship to send a ridiculous message when the series is tied to, tied to, to. That's ridiculous to me. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good nonsense. The guy, if anything, his flaw is supposed to be that he's a you know, that he's an egomaniac and that he would try and win it by himself. I mean, if he's going to do anything crazy, it's going to be, you know, doing too much instead of too little. And on top of that, like, he, he had nine turnovers. He played really poorly last night. But he had 27, 19, and 10. Like, he had a monster game, you know, in spite of it all. So I think I think what went wrong is it, it had nothing to do with, I don't know, it just didn't seem like it was a choice so much as just something in his head, something went, you know, I, again, it could have been the Celtics, but I don't think he was trying to send a message. And if he was trying to send a message, then I think what you were describing is not necessarily what, you know, the message he was trying to send. This is all from posting and posting.com, the greatest next blog on the internet. Um, Max Casper, Max Soldado on, uh, on the sports wire. Uh, so, the other story that came out today was uh, Mike Brown. First, he was fired according to Sports Illustrated, and then. The, the Cavaliers came out in the press conference and said he wasn't fired, but didn't say that he was staying on for next year. 
Uh, how stupid is that to, to keep Mike Brown on his coach for the Cavaliers? Well, it's hard to say. I, I have trouble, and I don't really, I don't know how anyone's played that. I have trouble um, gauging how much they can see actually has on that team. Um, you know, they've always been a good defensive team. I think that you deserve some credit for that. You know, one thing I read today, I think it was Brian Newport, the, uh, I think the, the Cavs beat writer who said that, Maybe it was, but some of that basically that Brown is very good at adjusting from game to game, but is very poor at adjusting within game, which I think is pretty interesting considering um, how the series has gone and how you know how it's finished up. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to say because we haven't really seen him as a head coach without LeBron, um, and that's such a unique you know exceptional situation, but. I think if anything, the, the, the owner should be on Danny Ferry right now because he made some he made some short term sort of knee jerk moves, um, you know, bringing in Jameson. He, he missed out on Jeff and Mike Conway, although that would have also been a pleasant move. Um, and I think you know signing Shaq was was a really ugly sort of tip the cap to the team. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think by by not thinking long term, he. You know, he blew this season in a way, and he also you know, might have hurt his chances of, of keeping LeBron James for next year. So I think he, he deserves more of the sort of the heat that Mike Brown does. Seth, were you at all stunned by the uh, rotation that Mike Brown was facing? I mean, that's my biggest criticism of Brown as head coach, is that he's never seemed to get the right mix of guys out on the court. I mean, despite the fact that Shaq played, or I guess put up decent numbers in the final couple of games, uh, putting, you know, leaving him in the game just slows everything down for Cleveland. It plays to the strength of Boston because they're not a real, you know, fast team with KG and, you know, Parkins on the court. But with Shaq on the court, it slowed everything down. So it sort of neutralized that part of the game. And I thought it played to Boston's strengths. Um, you know, I, I just feel like Brown never fully gets it in terms of rotation and, and getting a, a solid group of eight or nine guys to mix well. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen enough of the Cavs to to say that he never got it. But as far as the series goes, I agree with you completely that um, you know the Celtics they put Kevin Durant on Shaq, they they give him single coverage, and they let Shaq do what he could do, and he didn't do all that much. So you know, the only time that Shaq's really useful is if if he can he can need to be, need to be double teamed, and that uh, the Celtics had the personnel to avoid double teams. So you know, there goes that. And so you're stuck with shooters who are all guarded, and you know, a half court set that's not really going anywhere that's anchored by Shaq, and that slows down LeBron and slows down the whole team. And I, I agree with you, you know, if they, if they take Hicks and plays like less than a minute in the last game, if they, you know, let Hicks and run out, you know, play even a ten of them, play a small lineup with Barrett Dowd or Shamari Abdul playing the front court, you know, Leon Cohen. They they have the the guys to, to play small ball and I think that could have really busted the Celtics defense because transitionally, like you said, they're not the fastest team, but in a half court they're very good defense and having Shaq out there, you know, just sort of the, the guy shooting himself on the foot. Seth Rosenthal, posting and posting dot com is our guest on the Sports Wire, eighty eight point one FM WCWP. Also on the line at WCWPSports.org, streaming live. Um, so, Mike Brown aside, and, and, you know, throwing every single variable that he can, uh, LeBron to New York, do you think it's more plausible now or, or less after the 